welcome to the Finance Bunch Presents Girl Talk. Today we have, well, we're in her studio today, or should I say her office, we have Dr. Cindy Mitchell. She's a gynecologist, and we're going to talk about everything from sex to hormones. So come on with us and go on this little ride. How you doing, Dr. Cindy? Fine, thank you. How you been? Great. That's good, that's good. I'm so happy you invited us into your space. Oh, yeah, wanted you to come see see what I do, where I do it. Yeah, now, this is called the Tustin Longevity Center. Correct. And so, what are the services that are offered here? So, we offer um, basic medical care. Mm -hmm. We have um, five providers here, three um, MDs, mm -hmm. one naturopath, and a PA. And uh, we see basically any health condition. Um, but our approach is slightly different from okay. conventional medicine. So uh, we tend to want to approach uh, illnesses through a more holistic or more natural, through more natural methods. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that now I think people are becoming more aware mm -hmm. of um, the benefits of medicine from a holistic perspective yeah. versus traditional. And so... I love the fact that you work that way. Yeah, it's um, it's very different from the way I was trained, but mm -hmm. it makes a lot more sense. And you're right, I think there's more, um, you know, with uh, the internet, there's just more information right. that's available uh, to people with social media. People are, you know, telling their stories. And so, exactly. so the word is getting out that there is an alternative to um, conventional medicine. Right, now for yourself, what made you decide to become a gynecologist? Um, in medical school, when you do your rotations, you mm -hmm. get a taste for you know what, what each specialty is like. And I really liked OBGYN because I was, uh, you, you're dealing with basically healthy women, because yes. for the most part they're, they're younger, because you mm -hmm. have the, um, the obstetric population as well. Right. So I liked the idea of starting with kind of a healthy uh, population and then being able to um, talk prevention with them. And, oh, okay. And so you, you know, you're not getting them, unlike my medicine rotation where, you know, everyone comes in with their list of pills you know, you didn't have that. Like most people were healthy, and so you, you there was the chance to prevent prevent that, that from happening. Um, I also liked the fact that um, there's a lot. There was surgical uh, components to that mm -hmm. um, um, re um, specialty as well, and I like working with my hands. I love surgery, um, so that was fun as well. Oh my goodness, that's a lot for me. Um, I don't like blood. I don't like surgery. I don't like hospitals. <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> So when I meet someone who's in the medical field, it's always fascinating to me, although my mother and my sister both were nurses, mm -hmm. right? But um, that just wasn't my... Well, I could never yeah. work with finances, so... <laughs> We've talked about that, right? <laughs> right? Everybody has their niche. Exactly. <laughs> so now, you chose this as a career. What is the most common misperception mm -hmm. about being a gynecologist, did okay. you see? Um, well, I think a lot of people think that, oh, the gynecologist does your, you know, just does your pap smear, does your breast exams. Right. Um, and, and some people think of it that way. I think that is, unfortunately, a consequence of all the specialization. Right. But what I found was happening was I would have women coming to me, and I was the only doctor they were seeing. So they're mm -hmm. telling me about their fatigue. They're telling me about their weight gain. Right. And you're not really equipped as a specialist to deal, to with, deal that. with those things. So I would have to say, okay, maybe you should see an endocrinologist. And I was, I was tired of giving that answer. I okay. wanted to know how I could, you know, how I could further help. That's so, really good because yeah. you're right. When I think of um, a gynecologist, I think of that being my, outside of breaking a limb, that would be my total doctor because you trust the person, you've chosen mm -hmm. them, and you, and you equate gynecology to women's care health care mm -hmm. right but it's a specific part of it it's not the total picture exactly exactly mm -hmm. and actually I will sometimes have patients who come in for an annual exam mm -hmm. and then we start talking about all their other symptoms and before you know it our time's up and you know and we haven't quite gotten to the the annual exam but I tell them you know this is a lot more important like right. it's, it's important that you that your energy level is a five out of ten because this is what you're dealing with every day. Right. You know, cervical cancer, breast cancer. I mean, yes, you should, you know, uh, have a preventive approach to that, but that's not gonna 
happen for most women. That's true. That's true. And I, I, the one of the reasons I wanted to do this show is to really specifically speak to women about not just their financial picture, but their health, you know, self care, mm -hmm. all those things because. I think we put ourselves last in a lot of cases. Exactly. We care for everyone else better than ourselves. Yes. I remember when my kids were small, I make everybody's dentist appointments, everybody's doctor appointments before I would make my own. Mm -hmm. And not that I shouldn't, but you should include yourself in that scenario. Right. You shouldn't leave yourself out because you're still moving, right? Yes, yes. And plus, you have to be healthy enough and to take <laughs> care of everyone else. Everybody else, right. Yes. So now, what are the most concerns in women's health? What are the, the largest concerns around women's health? Well, I mean, I think you brought one up just now, is the mm -hmm. fact that a lot of women um, d put themselves last, okay. you know, and don't, um, and don't seek um, advice when, when they're not feeling well, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and then that kind of extends, sometimes, unfortunately, it extends to the medical profession, too. I think when they do come, Sometimes their symptoms are trivialized. Yes, um, I agree. Yeah, and so that's that's unfortunate. Like, no, it's not normal to be feeling that way. So right. to be told that is is, is frustrating. Because exactly. I, get that. I, I hear that a lot from patients. Oh, absolutely. Um, there are a lot of illnesses that are more prevalent to women mm -hmm. that are trivialized. Right. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And so to have someone like you who actually cares mm -hmm. enough to say, you know, no, this we need to look matter. into this yes, yes. further. This does look, this, we need to look into this further. It makes a lot of sense. And we need more doctors like you out there. I, I think we need more practices like this. Like I think the so approach, too. The approach to medicine exactly. has to change. Yeah, not medicine first and then the patient's care later. Right, right. And, yeah. and really the, the paternalistic uh, attitudes mm -hmm. uh, towards uh, towards patients that like you can't do that anymore. You need to have cooperation. It's a partnership. It's yes. not, you know, I'm the doctor, you're the patient. I've totally learned a lot from my patients actually. You know, they come to me again because they are more informed. They come to me with articles and mm -hmm. you know, and the doctor just has to, you know, not be too proud to say, okay, let you know, let me look at this. Let me see what there is to this. Right. So that is a, a different approach because mm -hmm. usually. My experience has been with doctors outside of who have practiced traditional medicine. That is the approach. They come with their degrees, mm -hmm. which you have a lot of, by the way, <laughs> and certificates and awards and all that. But, you know, they come with, with all of that and they sit down and they literally dictate to you what's wrong with you, mm -hmm. no matter what you say. And here's a prescription. Go fill it and you'll be fine. Yeah. And that's usually not the case. Right. You know, so... Now, with the health challenge, what health challenges can women avoid? Are there any that we can just avoid oh, yes. having? Many, many. <laughs> and the, the great thing is um, that it's it's lifestyle, lifestyle, yeah. lifestyle, lifestyle. So, proper diet, mm -hmm. regular exercise, and adequate sleep slash stress reduction. Yes, that's and a big one. It's huge. That one's yeah. huge. And you know, it's hard in our society, especially in American society. Everything mm -hmm. is go 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 and late nights and electronics and just um, it's hard to get that balance but yes if you pay attention to those lifestyle factors I mean everything from fatigue to anxiety to weight gain you mm -hmm. know and then not to mention the more serious like medical issues of mm -hmm. diabetes cardiovascular disease cancer yes so there's a lot that you can do to avoid wow. to avoid um, medical illness down the line right and I just noticed just from coming into your office and seeing how you operate that you actually sit on a ball yeah. like I, <laughs> I wanted to mention that because I thought wow she really does in her own even practice practice uh -huh. you know self-care you know and I was asking like why do you sit on that the ball uh -huh. and so please tell them what well, you say. actually it's it's it keeps me awake <laughs> Sitting on the ball, you need to, you know, you got to um, use your core to keep you balanced. Right. Otherwise, you just fall off. So, <laughs> yeah, so it keeps it more interesting. Right, but it also, for like you said, it, it mm -hmm. helps to strengthen your core yeah. because you sit a lot, if not, right? Right, like, right. In most professions, you sit a lot. Yeah. You know, now that I know they have more standing desks right. and things like Which that, but... prefer, yeah. Right, but so that's the question. So if you can have the difference between, as long as you're healthy... Uh-huh. 
a sitting desk and a standing desk. Standing desk seems oh, to be a desk. lot more yeah. healthy, right? Yes. So, okay, there's a tip. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for back, you know, posture and all that stuff. Exactly. Now, what are your three tips for female sexual health management? Because when we talked, when you said, Charlene, what are we going to talk about? And I said, I don't know. My show is called Girl Talk. You said, oh, okay, hormones and sex. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll talk about. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, I guess if we start with the younger women, well, not just younger women. I mean, older yeah. women need to, to know this too. But I, I would start with like, like, um, be prepared um, and so I'm primarily thinking about you know if you want a healthy sex life you want to be able to um, well first of all okay so sex right mm -hmm. it should be enjoyable right it should uh, it should be comfortable it should make you feel good right so first of all you want to be able to not have any diseases right you want to not get pregnant mm -hmm. so you know condoms 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 if you're not prepared for it you know what do they say? If if you're not, yeah. Wait. If you pre if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Right. So you don't want to be caught in either of those situations. So condoms. You know, until you're in a um, a uh, maybe a longer lasting relationship where you right. have a conversation about STDs and have gotten tested, so you know that both parties, both parties not are just clean. you, exactly. exactly, both parties are clean, ask for the, let me see the results, right. um, that's another thing, people should find a way to be comfortable with asking each other right. for the results of these tests and making sure that the test wasn't taken three years ago, exactly, right, right. exactly, yeah, I actually recommend to my patients that they get tested between partners, mm -hmm. just because you never know, you know, right. I mean, I'd like to trust, but you know, just... I think it you never know you never know and so you're better prepared if you get that checked out between partners um, yeah uh, so okay so uh, what do I, I tell patients like especially for the STDs like I'm like you know it's bad enough if you get gonorrhea or chlamydia mm -hmm. if you get herpes like it's you can't over. you can't you can't not over but well, it's but bad. you can't treat that and then you have right. to have that awkward conversation you know right like, so yeah um and then and it's uncomfortable <laughs> i suppose uh and then let's see and then contraception so condoms kind of kill two birds with one stone right um and then as you get older um or actually let's 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 stay let's continue with like the younger uh population um pain because mm -hmm. sometimes people uh, or women think, you know, they, they don't know what's normal. Right. And so um, I think we talked a little bit about endometriosis yes, the other we did. day. So that's not normal. If you're right. having intercourse and it's painful, then you need to see a doctor and, and see what else is going on. It could be endometriosis. You could have an ovarian cyst. There's, mm. you know, just different things that could be happening. Um, right. Actually, you could have an STD, too. Uh, yeah, all of that could make pain. it sec make sex painful. Yes, yes. So if it's it's not normal for it to be painful. Right. So if you're having and experiencing pain, mm -hmm. you should go in and see your doctor. Right, right, definitely. Um, and then and then now, kind of moving to the older mm -hmm. uh, older women, once you start going through um, the change or perimenopausal, mm -hmm. which actually happens younger than I think women think. We kind of say after 40, right. that's kind of fair game. Yeah. So, um, and I mean, I myself, doing this for a living, I started having some some symptoms. And because I was like 45, right. I didn't even think about it, right? Exactly. And I do this for a living. <laughs> so, you know, so just letting women know, yeah, every at, after 40, if you start having pain with intercourse dryness usually, mm -hmm. is what happens. Um, then, you know, then it's likely hormones. And I mean, right. it's an easy enough fix. Um, but yeah, but it's not, it's not normal. Okay. Speaking of hormones. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about hormones a little, cause that's a big deal. Yeah, it's my favorite subject. And it's your favorite subject. So yeah, yes, let's talk about yes. hormones for, for a while. I okay. am so clueless. So please educate me. Okay. I, I didn't, you know, I'm at an age where I've gone through what they call the transition mm -hmm. and it was uneventful for me I guess okay. I was lucky I, I lucky. It was completely uneventful uh -huh. I didn't have the hot flashes mm -hmm. that I see women experiencing yes 
Um, I, I did have the, the night sweats mm-hmm. for a while, but that even went away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was pretty mild for me yeah. and welcomed because <laughs> I didn't right. have all of that. I was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. no more problems. Mm-hmm. I don't have to go down that aisle in the grocery store, <laughs> right? But um, for most women, that's not the case. Mm-hmm. And then there are other outlining things that could happen. So could you just explain yes. that? Sure. So, um, at, like I said, after 40, uh, mm-hmm. it's possible for your hormones to start fluctuating. Okay. Um, so a lot of symptoms um, are, like you mentioned, night sweats, hot flashes, mm-hmm. change in periods. So either you start, sk- if you're lucky, you start just skipping periods. Mm-hmm. If you're unlucky, you're getting more frequent periods or they're yeah. becoming heavier or, or things like that. Um, vaginal dryness, pain with intercourse. Um, fatigue, weight gain, um, there are just so many, so many symptoms that can be associated to, um, to the change of life. Um, and so, as, as you said, not everyone goes through that, right. but, but a, a, fair enough, uh, a fair enough number of women do. Right. And so, you know, so then you, you, oh, I didn't mention mood changes too, anxiety, oh, yeah, depression, that oh, can happen yeah. too. Um, and so, so you go to the doctor, and this is one of my pet peeves. Um, you go to the doctor, and they want to put you on an antidepressant. And, yes. you know, it's like, why? Like, mm-hmm. you're not, your body's not lacking in antidepressants. Your body's lacking in the hormones. Right. But, unfortunately, with um, the, the WHI, which is one of the biggest, that's actually the biggest study that came out around 2001, I want to say 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. That was a large study where they claimed that it showed that there was increased risk of cardiovascular um, issues and increased risk of breast cancer. And so that scared most women off their hormone replacement therapy. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and it, it still has not fully recovered from that. That's very true, because you're right, I did hear that. Yeah, that was that was a big thing, because prior to that, I mean, hormones have been around since probably the 60s, mm-hmm. um, and they, it's gone through different iterations. First it was estrogen only, and it like keeps you young forever, right. but then they discovered, well, you know, if you're taking it without the progesterone, it actually increases your risk of endometrial cancer, so that's not good, but then once they figured that out, then, you know, more women were taking hormones, but then when this came out, it, you know, it totally, um, you, you know, it, to, it, it took it, them back. It took them back. Fifty yes, years. It took them back. <laughs> so, um, so ever since that study came out, actually, I have been, I've been so frustrated because, um, because even like even the American College of OBGYNs kind of took a stance that you know that uh, okay that just take um, just take hormones for like the shortest time necessary if you have to and just mm-hmm. the lowest dose. You know, they didn't really. They didn't, I don't know, They, in my opinion, they didn't look into it as much. Um, I attended a couple of lectures uh, that, because I wanted to know, you know, what's, right. what's going on with the hormones. Um, I attended a couple of lectures where I think more knowledgeable doctors said, you know, let's just look at this paper. You know, mm-hmm. let's look at this paper. And when you actually look at the statistics of the paper, it didn't show that. Wow. At all. Wow. So how... How were they able to yeah. say that it did? Wow. They were able to say it because it was like the largest funded NIH, you know, okay. uh, study. So like they had to show something for it. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I, I right. think it's a, a, a politics issue. But anyway, so um, most recently, last fall actually, there was a book that came out mm-hmm. by, by an, an oncologist. It's called um, Estrogen Matters. Okay. And I really, really like that book, and I recommend that book to everyone. Okay, Estrogen Matters. Estrogen Matters by okay. Avram Blooming. Okay. Um, and also uh, Dr. Carol uh, Tavris, who's a social psychologist. Um, but basically, I like that book because it's very well referenced. So mm. you could look at all the articles, all the scientific papers that they are referring to in that book, and you can read the articles themselves. So you can okay. see. So you can see you for can, yourself. Yeah, what the what the studies results actually were. exactly the results were. Um, and so, basically, in a nutshell, no de- no increased risk of breast cancer. Wow. Okay. Decreased risk of cardiovascular disease. Wow. Which is actually what kills one in two women lifetime versus breast cancer. Right. Everyone's right. concerned about breast cancer. 
and breast cancer happens in one in eight women lifetime. Right. But actually, fewer women are dying from breast cancer because we are catching it at earlier stages. stages. Mm -hmm. So you know, so everyone's worried about breast cancer, but they're not paying attention to so cardiovascular, cardiovascular risk. Um, decreased risk of dementia. That's huge, wow. in my opinion. Yes, that uh, is. And then, and then um, uh, protection, bone protection from osteoporosis, osteopenia. That one I don't think is really as controversial. So, right. Um, but yeah, so I, in my opinion, the benefits far outweigh the risks. And For not risk. to mention just like your your well being, like right. on, on the hormones. Um, so no wonder. Um, I've read a lot of articles that say women are having heart attacks at higher and higher rates than they have in the past. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're really saying that it's because, you know, women are taking on more stressful roles, and I'm sure mm -hmm. that plays a part in it. Right, right. But could it be because women go into menopause or start heading in that direction right in their 40s mm -hmm. and they're not addressing it in mm -hmm. the way that we have in the past, right. could, could that be something that's, I think that's definitely part attributing of it. to a part yes. of it? Yes. Wow. I mean, again, you go with like your lifestyle, right? Of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. But yes, but what can women do to, to, I think, to protect themselves? Yes. Hormones. Sleep is huge. Sleep too, is right? huge. Yeah. yeah. Sleep is really about. big. Yeah. 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 Try to get like, how, well, how seven, much sleep? Minimum seven. Minimum seven. Seven yeah. hours of sleep. There's another book. That okay. I would recommend for that. It's called Why We Sleep by um, Matthew Walker. He's a PhD out of uh, Berkeley, I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that gives some good information too about how huge sleep is. Right. Um, like evolution, right? Evolution is mm -hmm. pretty smart. It has absolutely. It has uh, it has served us well. But why would you spend a third of your life asleep? Right? So you could li live yeah, the other no... two thirds of your life <laughs> exactly. healthy. <laughs> exactly. But like, if you think about it, you can't collect food during that time. Right. You can't reproduce. Right. You can't. Um, uh, you know, you can't do productive things. Right. But so, uh, so I think that the the importance of sleep has eluded us for a long time. But more recently, the science has come out that shows that. You know, it, we need to sleep. You, you need to sleep. It helps you learn. It helps you retain information. It um, decreases risk of dementia. There's right. another one. Um, improves moods. I mean, you know. Yeah, you're the, not gonna. You're not gonna be. You, you you have no. You have less patience when you're tired. Right. When you're sleepy, yeah. you just yeah. have. Oh, less. definitely. Yeah, and yeah. you're actually there was a you're you're less ethical. Ah. When you're sleep deprived. Really. Yeah. Yeah, you to make huh. poorer judgments. Wow. Poor, yeah. So, very interesting. So, ladies, get that sleep. Yeah. <laughs> beauty <laughs> it's sleep. It's a requirement. Well, literally, beauty, beauty sleep. sleep. They actually showed in a study that uh, people objectively looking at pictures mm -hmm. of sleep deprived, they found them less attractive. Wow. Because yeah, it shows, right? So, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, dark circles, uh, <laughs> right. impatience. Not only um, do you look bad, but your attitude's bad too. Right, right. right. <laughs> Now, what are um, some of the, there's some taboos out there, oh. and what is yes. the common, what is a common reason for the loss of sexual drive? I think there's, there's a lot of taboos. Yeah, well, no, there, there's a lot of reasons that happens. I mean, usually, usually it happens after you have your first kid, right? Right. <laughs> and I mean, first of all, you're just tired. Like the last thing yeah. you want to do is have sex. Right. So you're like sleep deprived. Right? Exactly. So, so when you're in the childbearing age, right? right? Yeah. 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 And you start having children, that could be a reason because you're just tired. Right. You're just tired. Um, I. And then, and then, of course, as you get older, the hormones, I think the hormones right. make a difference when you lose not only estrogen and progesterone, but testosterone, too. Mm. Um, there's not as many studies with that, which I would like to see. I mean, there are plenty of anecdotal, you know, um, like we treat patients with testosterone, women with testosterone, but there are not large enough um, studies to, to, to show, to prove right. that, um, you know, that it actually does help. Because for some women it works, for some it doesn't, so... Um, so hormones, and I, I, I think too, okay, I'm going to recommend another book, but so that's fine. This, I'm a reader. this one, but <laughs> this one is very, 
um, how how can I how can I describe it? Like you'll either love it or you'll hate it. Okay. And if you're if you're a diehard feminist, you might stone me. But um, <laughs> you know, Dr. Laura. Yes. Dr. Laura. So uh, it's called Proper Care and Feeding okay. of Husbands. Okay. And so basically, the upshot of that book is it's saying you, you kind of have to you have to remember mm-hmm. that men are very different from women. Absolutely. Right. So for men, sex is just very important. Right. It's just, you know, for women, they're fine to just cuddle, they're fine to, mm-hmm. you know. But for guys, it is an important thing. Right. So, you know, after several, you know, or many, not just several, but after many nights of I'm tired, dear, mm-hmm. like, you know, it's going to get frustrating. Right. right. And, and so obviously they can do, they can do their part in helping right. to decrease, you to, know, to decrease let me take care of the baby so you can get some Could sleep. Could you take care of the baby, clean the house, <laughs> could you wash the dishes, <laughs> right. cook a All meal, stuff. just bring it yes, home, yes, yes. just kind of just be a part. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so obviously that has to definitely oh, yeah, be absolutely. part of it, right? So the relationship absolutely. has to be good. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, I mean, well, sex, like the marriage, it it needs if it's not it good. needs work. It's yes. like it's like a garden. It's not like you get married and then everything is rosy from there there on. Right. Like it's like your garden. Weeds will start to sprout up mm-hmm. if you don't clear those weeds. You're going to be overtake. Over exactly. The <laughs> exactly. Right. So um, so again, assuming that the relationship is good, I, I do think that um, that that um, women just need to kind of. I don't know, just remember that, that it is more important for, you know, for, for a guy. Mm-hmm. And actually, if you think about it, once, like, once you get into it, it's kind of fun, right? Right, yeah. So, so when you get past the sleepy. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And it's kind of, so it's kind of making it, like, mentally a priority, mm-hmm. you know, and just choosing to, you know, yeah, choosing to participate versus to do that. Because I think, I don't, I can't speak for all women, I, you know, I, I think it becomes easier and easier to say, oh, I'm just tired. Oh, not today. Exactly. Oh, no. And then you look up and a month has passed. Right. right? And now he's not speaking to you at all. <laughs> and you wonder why. <laughs> he's frustrated, you know. But yes. if, if I think that on both sides, like you said, if the relationship right. is healthy uh-huh. and there's communication, exactly. communication between the two yes. so that he understands why she's tired. Yes. He, you know, I think he would be motivated to help more right. <laughs> if he realized what the reward could be at the end right. of helping with the baby, helping with the dishes, helping, yeah. when you, you know, right. to pull. The, yeah. So communication yes. is everything. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, I kind of like you said, like, well, OK. And then if you're tired all the time, I mean, you know, just having had a baby, you know, aside, right. like maybe you have a thyroid problem. Maybe right. something else is going on. Like, That's because, very true. you know, if you're if you're sick. Mm-hmm. You, you know, um, of course, you're not going to feel like wanting to have exactly. sex if you're not feeling well. So, again, another yeah. reason to go talk to your doctor. Exactly. And what I'm happy about in this conversation is that we should see our doctors more. Not, you know, like every week calling doctor, hey, doc, this is what's wrong with me. Oh, I think. What do you think? No. But to actually go in and see your doctor what would you say like a couple of times a year or at least once a year at least once a year right yeah i mean and that's what you know that's what the well woman or the annual exam is typically Mm -hmm. for and then you you know in the course of that well woman you you know you have the conversation well i would maybe make a suggestion especially if you're having complaints Mm -hmm. maybe see a gynecologist who has stopped doing ob Okay. Because, you know, if you have a doctor who's also doing obstetrics, a lot of the times they're running in and out. They, like, have 10 minutes to see you. That's very so, true. So seeing a doctor who just does GYN might help give you a little bit more time to spend with a doctor. But, um, yeah, usually in the course of that conversation, you know, you ask basic questions like energy level. Right. You know, uh, how's, you know, sex and all right. that stuff. And then if things come up, you know, then, then it's more than once a year. Like, I'll tend to follow mm-hmm. my patients maybe... You know, maybe every three months. Mm-hmm. It just depends on what's going on. Right, yeah. But I think for women to be more to validate the symptoms, mm-hmm. you know, no, it's just not going away. Right. Validating the symptoms and actually talking to maybe a physician about it because you'd rather be wrong 
Like mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong right. with them to be right. There is something wrong uh-huh. and, and not do anything about it because you feel like, oh, I already went to see my doctor once this year. Right. I don't need to go back. I'll just go see him, you know, the next time around. I'm too busy. Uh-huh. No, self-care means in all areas, right? Yeah. So right. you might have to see your doctor more than once. Right. And also, if you feel like something's not right mm-hmm. and your doctor keeps telling you you're fine, yeah. get a second opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Get a second opinion because something may not be right. Cause right. Like with endometriosis, that is one of those, you know, but we could spend a whole week talking about that, but that's one of those, you know, women's illnesses mm-hmm. that go, that is really so far under the radar as far as what should be done about it, mm-hmm. in my opinion, mm-hmm. that, um, you know, women should really seek their doctor out because Mm -hmm. we do in my opinion have other things going on that maybe men don't have going on so see someone who actually cares about that right right Right. i have a good suggestion (laughs) come see dr cindy (laughs) she'll take good care of you (laughs) yeah so now one of my other questions is when it comes to women in medicine what topics should be explored or focused on So when it comes to women in medicine, what topics should be explored? My gosh, it's... um, Or focused on. It's going to be different for every woman. I mean, I think, like, my huge thing, like I said, was the menopause and hormones, and a lot Mm -hmm. has come out since then. So, And even non-hormonal methods uh, have come out, um, for instance... The, uh, the Mona Lisa Touch. I don't know if you've heard about that. What is that. the Mona Lisa Touch? It is laser therapy for vaginal atrophy or vaginal really? dryness. So for women who, for whatever reason, decide they don't want to do hormones or mm-hmm. maybe, you know, maybe, I mean, as much as I love hormones, some women don't do well with it. They just right. they don't feel well with it. So then, okay, it's not for them. But so if for whatever reason, you know, hormones isn't working for you, but you want to be able to have sex and not be in pain, Mm -hmm. the Mona Lisa Touch, basically what it does is it, um, it, uh, it gives you, um, the laser penetrates deeply enough, but really actually quite superficially, less than a fifth of a millimeter is Mm -hmm. all it takes, that depth, and that is enough to, um, uh, cause more collagen to come in and more blood vessels, more water oh, wow. to come into the tissues, and it basically will bring the vaginal tissues back to premenopausal status. Oh my goodness, so, ladies, did you hear that? So and it's called lot, the Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa touch. The touch? Yes. Okay. So there are a lot of there are a lot of things that have um, come out since I've gotten out of residency, you know, that address that the causal health. health. So yeah. that's very exciting. So you'll have young girls, 25 years old, mm-hmm. running to go get the Mona Lisa touch. 25? Hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> actually, <laughs> you know, uh, usually that age not, but there are actually other benefits to it other than the vaginal dryness. Okay. So like urinary incontinence, it helps a little bit with okay. too. I mean, not the serious right. incontinence, but, but some, some. Okay. Yeah. So 25 year olds, stay away. <laughs> 55. 55. 55. Start heading yeah. in that direction, right? <laughs> so now, you know, I think schools get like kind of a bad rap in some cases. Oh, and yeah. there's always this question around, you know, the conversation around sex in school. Okay. So what what are your thoughts? You have children yeah. that are in school. Yes. Do you think that schools touch on the subject enough or not enough? Or what would you like to see change? Well, I'm like, and unfortunately, right, education is not going to be the same no. everywhere. No. So I think Irvine Unified is doing a pretty good job. Okay. Um, I mean, I do think it should be taught. Like, right. It's such in a, every you know, school, yes, in every part education. of the country. Education. I mean, information, knowledge is power. Knowledge is knowledge power. Knowledge is power. So, um, yeah, so let's see. I was talking to my son uh, earlier this week, and um, so they learned about sexually transmitted diseases oh, that's good. and using condoms. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I really liked was they went through estimating the cost of having a baby. Now, that's that, important. That was very smart, I yeah. thought. So they could see, okay, this costs real money. And yeah. a lot of it. Yes. Right? Yes. And that was only, you know, for the first year, you know. Right. And you have this for 18 years. Plus no sports college. car for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
so <laughs> start having children too young no sports car mm-hmm. for you right yeah so wow. so i think so i think it's good okay all right well in in certain certain, in certain areas. areas and yeah. you know as parents we have the right to ask the school to make sure that a certain part of their curriculum should be guided in that direction and then we as parents do the rest right you know oh, true yes yes you know, parents so. yeah Still have to do have your to part. Do. Yeah. Big part in it. Although, don't, don't. My my kids, I don't know that they appreciate having a gynecologist for a mom. Oh <laughs> my god, I could not even imagine. <laughs> We're not ready for this. We're not ready for this. I, I stop. Don't talk about that. Yeah. Don't say that. Don't say that. Which is like so the opposite of when I was, you know, like right. my mom. Like we didn't talk about anything. You know? Right. So, well, the times have changed. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And then, what is the most frequently asked question, in your opinion, as a gynecologist, that women ask about sex? Women ask about sex. Mm -hmm. Uh, They come in and they come see you and they say, so, Dr. Cindy. Gosh, I don't like, I'm usually the one asking the question. Everything (laughs) is good. Um, no, because usually they're complain- coming in complaining that they don't want it. Oh, okay. So that's a thing. Um, I guess maybe I've had the question a few times about, like, well, how, how often, how frequent is normal? Oh, okay. And okay. there isn't any There isn't normal. any normal, No, because right? every couple's going to be different. Absolutely. So, you know, you don't want to, like, you're not, it's not a competition. Right. So, you know, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. So. so now, before we close, is there anything else, like, off the top of your head that you'd like to share with us that I should take away from this, that we all will take away from this, because I think this interview has been amazing. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you for taking the time Mm -hmm. to sit and talk about sex, hormones, women's health challenges. No, it's it's important. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, I just think it's important for women to know that there are, you know, that there are alternatives if you're not, I mean, like, and we, I didn't even touch on thyroid. Thyroid is such right. a common, hor- you know, we talked about hormones. Yes. But, you know, like, like it's like uh, women like kind of say, okay, you know, I'm getting older. That's why I'm gaining weight. That's mm-hmm. why I'm tired. That's normal. Well, no. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be that way is what, right. I, what I should say. It's normal in the sense that as you get older, you lose your hormones. Right. You know, but the thing is, our our average life expectancy now is like reaching into the 90s. I know, because my mom will be 89. Yeah. And she's, I mean, she's, she's pretty healthy. She goes for her morning walks uh-huh. and, you That's know, great. all of that. So, yeah. So, it's, I mean, but so, point is like, you know, you're spending half of your, half of your life in menopause. And so, I mean, for some women that works fine, they mm-hmm. don't need hormones, you know, and they're, I don't I even know. About it like or your mom, wow. you know, is your mom on hormones? No. You know, and she's mm-hmm. doing great. That's great. Yeah. But, you know, but other women... Notice they might need it. Yeah. yeah, they might need it. So, so anyway, so thyroid, thyroid is a huge one that we butt heads with with conventional medicine. Actually, okay. um, conventional medicine tends to look at TSH alone. That's a mm-hmm. thyroid stimulating hormone, and as long as it's under four point five, you're fine. Well, then why am I tired? Why am I gaining can't weight? Why, why am I losing I lose hair? Weight? Yeah, why hair can't I lose out. weight? Hair wow. falling out. You know. I'm cold all the time. We hear this all the time. Wow. So, you know, so I think going to more, um, going to practices that kind of have more of a natural Absolutely. approach, they, they will tend to look at, you know, other labs other than just your TSH. Right. And then also, you know, your symptoms, that's that's going to be more important than your labs, really. Exactly. You know, if, if you're telling me you have all these symptoms, and your labs are normal, well, maybe they're not normal for you, you right. know? So you need someone to really listen to what you're saying and, and you know, want to give weight to that, too, and not just lab results. Right. Well, I'll tell you, in meeting you for the first time and then getting to know you and becoming friends with you, I, myself, was so impressed with the fact that, because, you know, you don't see this everywhere, these types of clinics, mm-hmm. right, that have... They use um, more of a holistic approach mm-hmm. first, and then if traditional medicine is needed, of course, you can also prescribe that. Yes. But I just found that to be so valuable. It's, well, not just for women, but because I'm a woman, for me, yeah. and you know, for us as women. And so I just applaud this this whole 
type of medical care that this center gives. And I think we need more places like the Tustin Longevity, you know, yeah. center. I think I we need agree. more. I yeah. Agree. So, Dr. Cindy, thank you so much. My pleasure. For being so a great. part of Girl Talk. And I am going to ask you here on air, I want you back. Okay. We, I want you to come back and talk to us again sometime sure. soon. And whenever there's something new going on that we should know about, please let me know. I and will. I will definitely share it with our audience. I'll have you share it with our audience. Okay. How's that? Okay. Sounds All right. Good. Thank you so much You're for being welcome. with us. Thank and, you. And for allowing us to, you know, come in and just see how your clinic works and your center works and just to see all that you guys are doing. That is so good. So if you want to check out more about the Tustin Longevity Center, we're talking about women today, but it does include men. They also take insurance. So a lot of places that you'll go that has this setting will not take insurance, but the Tustin Longevity Center does take insurance. So I want to thank you for listening. Check out Dr. Cindy's information below. And I want to thank you for listening to Girl Talk, and we'll see you real soon.